Hey crafty fam, it's Alex Vanover and welcome back to my craft room. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the super fun and trendy stickers with an offset like you see all over TikTok and let's just be honest, everywhere. So let's get started. In this tutorial today, we're gonna be using Inkscape to create the offset around the outside of your stickers. So in order to do this tutorial, you need to have Inkscape downloaded on your computer. So Inkscape is a free piece of software that a lot of Cricut users use outside of Cricut Design Space that has more advanced design capabilities. But you need to know that it has to be used on a computer, so it can't be used on any phones or tablets, and it is free. But I don't have a tutorial on how to download Inkscape on my channel, so I will link a tutorial up in the YouTube card as well as down in the description to a channel called Troy Tube. I'm sure you guys know Troy Young. He is fantastic if you don't already know him, um, but he has tons of tutorials on how to download Inkscape and how to use it. So all you need to do is go to his channel, watch the tutorial on how to download it on your computer, and then you can come back and I'll show you everything you need to know to create an offset for your stickers. So pause this tutorial, go download it, and then come back. So the first step to creating an offset with your stickers in Inkscape, and the way I'm going to show you how to do this, requires an SVG file. So make sure that the file that you import into Inkscape is an SVG. So in order to import that file, we're going to go to File and then Import. And then you can select the file that you are trying to create the offset for. So I'm going to use this Love Pumpkin script, but I'm going to be sure to select the SVG file and then click Open. So once I have this into Inkscape, the first step is to make sure that your object is all one layer or all one piece. And the way that you're going to do that is make sure that your object is selected like this, then you're going to go to Object, Ungroup. And since separate boxes did not occur, that means that my object is already all one piece. But if you do get separate objects or separate boxes pop up to show that you have multiple pieces, then you want to click a, and drag a box all the way around all of the boxes and then go to path union. And of course that step is already done with my image, uh, but you may have to do that depending on what you're bringing into Inkscape. You'll have to play around with it, but either way it needs to be all one piece. Then you need to make sure your object is selected and you need to go to path, object to path. You're not going to see anything change here and that's perfectly okay, but that's a really important step and that is absolutely required for your Cricut to cut out this object. Then I'm just going to hold down the shift key and the plus key so that I can zoom in a little bit and see what I'm doing a little bit better. So let's go ahead and create this offset. Make sure your object is selected and then you need to go to path, linked offset. Then you're going to see this little diamond pop up at the top of the outline of your design. This is good because that means that the linked offset is working on your object. Then you want to go down to these colored boxes down here and you can select any color you want. It doesn't really matter, but this is just going to help us see visually the linked offset a little bit better. Then go back to the diamond and you're just going to drag it outward a little bit and you'll see an outline start to form. This is your offset, so you can drag it out as much or as little as you want to and get it to a spot where you're happy with it. So I want my linked offset to look about like this, and then I'm going to click this um, little like cursor up here, and that's just going to take us back to the regular editor. So then what we want to do is grab our original object and drag it off of the offset. That way we can work with just this offset. So the problem with the offset layer as it is right now is that all of the white spaces, the Cricut is going to go in and try to cut these. And that's going to be a little bit difficult because with stickers, you really want to stick to simple shapes. That makes it so much easier to peel and to use. So what we're going to do is since our offset is selected, we're going to go to path, object to path. And then we're going to go on the left hand panel down to the second option, which is the node editor. So to, the easiest way to explain nodes is to think of everything that your Cricut cuts like it's plotted on a graph. And each node is basically a point on the graph telling your Cricut which way to turn. So the way that we want to simplify this outline is to get rid of any of the nodes in the center of the design so that your Cricut will not cut anything in the center. So you're just going to click and drag a box around any of these inner nodes you want to get rid of. And then I use the delete key on my keyboard and just select delete. And you don't want to mess with anything around the outside um, just because that's going to mess up the outline that you created. But you just want to drag a box around these nodes and click delete. And remember that you can always use control Z to undo or go to edit undo. If you mess anything up, it's really, really easy to go backwards and fix it. 
So I'm just going to go back over to my left hand panel and click the regular editor so that it goes back to normal. Then I'm going to drag my first object on top of the outline and make sure that I'm happy with how it looks. And I think that's going to be really good and see how much simpler that is. The Cricut is going to cut down in this area, up in this area, and down inside the V. But other than that, it's not going to mess up the outline too much. So once you have what you're happy with, the next thing we need to do is save it. So you're going to go to File, Save As, and then in the drop down Save As type, you're going to select Plain SVG. Then you want to, you know, label it however you want. So we'll call it just Pumpkin Love and save it somewhere where we can find it later. So I'll save it on my desktop for now. Then you're gonna click save. And it may warn you that you don't wanna save as a plain SVG, but you can totally ignore that warning. It's completely fine. Then we're gonna go into Cricut Design Space, start a new project and import the SVG that we just created in Inkscape. So I'll go back to my desktop and find the Pumpkin Love SVG that I created. So it looks a little funky because the layers are separated, but it's totally fine. Then we'll click save and we'll insert this project onto our canvas. So another thing that you'll notice about working with things in Inkscape is when you bring it into design space, it's probably going to be huge and that's fine. You can just take it down to whatever size you want it. Um, that is a really funky thing about design space. The next thing that you want to do is ungroup these two objects so that you can put them back together. And so this offset layer is this orange color and a lot of the trendy stickers that you see such as on TikTok have a white background. So if you want to do that, you can select your offset layer and then under line type, you're going to leave cut alone, but then you can click this box right here and you can change it into whatever color you want. So we'll do a white version of this. We'll also duplicate it. Maybe I'll try some other fun themed versions. I kind of liked that orange um, background. So I'll try this and then maybe make it orange again. So then you can see that we have some different versions of our sticker. And the next thing you want to do is select each piece. That's the top piece and the outline by drawing a box around it or holding down shift and clicking both of them. And you want to select flatten. Flatten is the best way to get the object to print the inside and cut around the outside. So you want to do this on all three layers or however many you have or excuse me, not all three layers, all three stickers. So then you need to size your stickers to be whatever size you want them to be. So I tend to like smaller stickers. So I'm going to just do a couple different sizes here. So you can play around with this as much as you want. But one thing that I do want to show you as we continue, when you go to the make it screen, you're going to see that we're not using up very much of our piece of paper. And we want to use as much of our paper as we can because we can't send it back through our printer after it's been cut. So I'm going to go back to my canvas. and I'm going to play around with the number of stickers that I have until I fill up as much of the page as possible. So for example, I'll just start duplicating a bunch of these. And then the way that you can check if you filled the paper up is just to go back to the make it screen and see how many um, mats you have. So let's try this. And now, as you can see, I need to get rid of the last two red pumpkin loves and then I'll have a full sheet of stickers. Now, another thing that I want to tell you about the method we are using today is that I'm going to be using Avery sticker paper. So I'm using Avery sticker paper, knowing that these stickers are only going to be used in dry conditions. If you are going to be making stickers that might be used such as, um, you know, in a planner, but also potentially on a tumbler or something that can get wet, then you probably just want to use printable vinyl with UV laminate. I love Starcraft printable vinyl, so I will go ahead and link that in the UV laminate down in the description for you um, if you want to use that material. But like I said, I'm going to be using Avery sticker paper, which is intended to just be used for dry, um, dry conditions or dry environments. It's definitely not waterproof. Then once our maker slowly connects, <laughs> we will select send to printer. And one thing that I really like to do, at least in this case, since we already have an offset, I like to turn off the bleed since we already have kind of a bleed all the way around all of our objects. I also like to use the system dialog for things like this. So then I'm going to select print 
and this little box will pop up. Sometimes you need to move windows out of the way because your system dialog box may go to the back of your screen. So just keep in mind that you may have to find this a little bit. And then I'm gonna go into preferences and everybody's preferences are gonna be set up differently depending on the printer that you're using. I'm gonna be using the Epson Workforce 3720. Um, I will link that down in the description as well. That is the printer that I use for all my print and cut stuff and I love it. Um, it works great for these kinds of things. And when I do stickers, the only thing I do is go down to quality and from standard, I like to select high and then I click OK. And then when you're ready, click print. But let's hop over to my printer and I'll show you how to load and print your sticker paper. So here's the Avery sticker paper that I'm going to be using. I'll be sure to link this down in the description for you guys in case you want to use the same sticker paper. So here's how you load it into your printer. First, you need to pull out the tray where the paper goes, and I recommend removing any paper that you have in this tray in case you print more than one copy, you won't accidentally print onto regular paper. Then you need to take your piece of sticker paper and you need to orient it so that it's going to print out the top properly. So the way that I need to do that is I lay mine with the back side up so that when it comes across the rollers, then it's going to come out the correct direction. But that's going to change for each printer. So I'm just going to insert that in this bottom tray. Make sure that it lays nice and flat and then close it. And then on my printer, I'm just going to tell it that everything is normal. I don't change the paper settings or anything for sticker paper. Then I'm going to select OK. Then back in Cricut Design Space, I can select print and it'll print out as normal. Once your stickers print, then you're ready to put it in your Cricut and allow the Cricut to cut out all of the stickers. I'm going to be using the remove the sticker paper removable setting on my Cricut. That's what works best for me, but don't forget to do test cuts on your Cricut to make sure that that's the setting that works best for you. <laughs> The only thing that's tricky about removing stickers from the mat is that the sticker paper is actually cut in the middle to help you remove the paper, but it can be a little tricky when getting it off the mat. So make sure that you flip your mat over and you remove the paper from the mat instead of the mat from the paper. This will also stop a lot of curling if you have issues with paper curling after you put it on your Cricut mat. See that line right there? <laughs> that's to help you get the sticker paper off, but it can be kind of a pain when you're using sticky mats. So so just make sure that all the paper comes off as you go and you are all set. And there you have it, super cute stickers on your Cricut. If we haven't already connected on social media, I would love to see your stickers and anything else that you've made using my tutorials. So if you're on Instagram, use the hashtag DIYAlex. And if you want to connect with me on all major social platforms, you can find me at DIYAlexVanover. I'll also put links down in the description directly to all my profiles so you can find me super easily. And if you haven't already, please click right here to subscribe to the DIY Alex YouTube channel. Scroll down just a little bit and ring the bell right next to subscribe so that you never miss when I upload a new video. I hope we can craft again soon.